if you're someone that is just, you know, walking through life flinging thousand dollar bills, then maybe that's no big deal for you. Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video I struggled with. I filmed an entire different version of it and then decided that I didn't really call out the elephant in the room when it comes to luxury brands, luxury shopping. And I wanted to take just a minute to actually explore that as part of the video. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna get to that in just a second. We are gonna be talking today about the Burberry trench coat. This is an iconic piece. It's something that I am very excited that I have recently added to my wardrobe. Wardrobe. This is the Waterloo Long Heritage Trench. I'm going to talk about the process of actually buying it in the Rome airport, which was not what I expected to do. And we're going to chat a little bit about luxury shopping and the hidden recession. So <laughs> let's start there. Um, let me say at the outset, if you are a person for whom a $2,000 purchase is no big deal and you do that on a regular basis, I love that for you. That is not my reality. And I want to just say that I'm very much aware that although everyone keeps wanting to say that we're not in a recession, practicality dictates otherwise. Everything from childcare costs, housing costs, grocery costs, gas prices, everything is challenging right now. And as we know, wages have not gone up as prices have gone up. I, I just wanna say that I, I have been in the place where I was challenged to buy groceries. Scott and I have had a lot of economic opportunity in our 34 years together. But a lot of you who have worked very hard and have saved a lot of money and have wanted to do some of these luxury purchases are like me, and maybe you do a big luxury purchase uh, once a year. For me, it's about once every other year. In fact, I have a short list of holy grail pieces that are things that I have wanted for decades. Um, if you watch my London video years ago when I first started my channel, um, my Burberry scarf was one of those first items that I purchased. This Cartier watch was another one of those items. And this Burberry trench was the next one. So for me, these purchases are a big deal and I don't take $2,000 lightly. I know when I was researching this, because it is an investment piece and something that I did not want to get wrong, uh, I watched a lot of videos. Um, I hope that you find this video helpful. The good thing about pieces like this is this coat has not changed much in, oh, I don't know, since World War I. <laughs> so um, chances are, Whenever you come around to being able to buy this coat, and maybe that's today for you, um, the, the features and the things about it are not really going to change. Okay, so let's get that out in the open. Um, the reason I chose this particular one, okay, before I do that, let's go back <laughs> to me and trench coats. I have mentioned trench coats in particular in really every video I've done for you guys. If I have talked about European travel or any kind of fall capsule wardrobe or anything like that, I have talked about what an important item this is to me. I have had a trench coat, at least one, in my wardrobe since I was 16 years old, okay? My first one was a London Fog. If I can find it, I'll post a couple pictures of me in my London Fog uh, trench coat. I had that trench coat for years. In fact, I don't know what happened to it. I kind of wish I still had it because it's probably still in really good shape. And that's another really good brand, by the way. Um, but the Burberry is kind of the gold standard. Uh, the Gabardine, uh, Mr. Burberry invented the Gabardine that it's made out of in 1879. The trench coat came about in World War I. It's called a trench coat because soldiers literally wore it in the trenches. It has had so many different iterations over the years. There are so pretty much every major uh, designer, um, lesser designers, you can find them at Target. Like the style is iconic and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So if you're looking for an investment piece, this is a great one to go with. Now, how did I end up buying this at the Rome airport? I knew that I wanted this. This was the one that I had landed on. The Waterloo is literally the classic. It is the heritage. You've got the really beautiful lining. It is, of course, all made in England. Beautiful stitching. You have amazing details. Like, I don't know if this is reading, but you can see how it is on the back with the buttons, with the um, Burberry check fabric on the back. There are a million different ways you can wear this coat. And I found out about those million different ways from Luigi in the Rome airport. Now, 
Full disclosure, I'm not actually sure that was his name, but that was his name in my brain. So, um, and, and he seemed like a Luigi, so we're gonna go with that. He was absolutely fabulous. I had three hours before my flight when I got to the airport. This is what I was planning on asking for for my birthday, which is in July, okay? This is June. I had just gotten off a Mediterranean cruise. I know, it's ridiculous. That's a story for another day. But I saw they had a Burberry shop in the Rome airport, and the thing that was making me hesitate about ordering it online, because Scott and I had already talked about it, we had decided that would be my birthday gift this year, was that I wasn't sure what size I was. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna pop into the Burberry store and just kind of see what size I would be. In walks Luigi, everything that you would expect. I have no video or pictures of this because I wasn't actually intending to buy this coat that day. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had done some videoing, but I didn't. I'll see if I can find online like a picture of the Burberry store in the Rome airport and I'll insert it right here. So what you may or may not know about buying things duty-free is those luxury shops that are in the airport, you actually don't pay the tax on those items. And a lot of times, things that are imported to the US from Europe or from England are priced way better there than they are in the US or if you have them shipped to you because of the VAT. So, okay, I know this. I've bought luxury items overseas before. Um, and I was like, I'm, I'm just kind of curious about sizing and price, whatever. So we try on a few different kinds. We end with this one. We determine that I am a size six. And then Luigi starts uh, showing me all the different ways that you can wear this particular coat. All the different ways that you can button it back, say if it's windy or whatever, you can kind of do that kind of a thing. All the different ways that you can secure the top if it's very cold. I don't know if you guys can see this very cool uh, brass detailing right here. Isn't that amazing? And just the different ways that you can notch the collar. He actually tied this for me. You can watch tutorials online about how to get this like perfect Burberry tie in the back, but Luigi did this for me, so I may never change that again. No, I will, because eventually I'll want to wear it and have it tied, but um, the lines on it are perfect. This particular style, I feel like you can wear out with a nice dress. You could wear it as an overcoat to the opera, or you could wear it with jeans. It, it really is that versatile, and you will see women wear this all over the world with all different kinds of clothing. Um, it's, it's like the perfect coat. It is, it's the perfect coat. So I try it on. So Luigi's like the size six. This is the size for you, which I'm so glad I tried it on because other versions of the trench coat, I would be different sizes. So you really do wanna make sure that you're sizing it correctly. Um, you can also have these altered. If you live where there's a Burberry store, Burberry will alter the coat for you for free. Um, we don't have, again, we don't have a Burberry store here, but that's just something to keep in mind. And Luigi, because he was the best, was like, okay, so you were planning on ordering this when you got back to the States. I said, yes. He said, let's run some math. Now I actually pulled out the receipt for the purposes of this video to make sure that I had this right. If I were to order it online, it would be $2,500 plus I would pay tax. So here in my area, that's between, I think it's like 6.7% would be the tax that I would pay. Because it was duty free, I was not gonna have to pay any tax. So not the 20% VAT, nor was I going to have to pay the sales tax that I would have had to pay had I had it shipped to me here in the US. Also though, um, it was special pricing because I was buying it in the Rome airport. So Luigi went to the Burberry US website with me and I already knew this price in advance, but I thought it was great that we pulled it up together and we saw that the price was $2,500 and then he ran the math for me buying it there in the Rome airport and the price was 1,680 euros, which is around $1,800 US. So $1,800 instead of $2,500. And then I would also have to pay sales tax. Okay, let's do that again. $1,800 or $2,500. Did not take me long to make that decision because you know, I'm no mathematician, but even I know that was a darn good deal. So I stood there for just a second I thought, you know what? 
we're doing this. We are buying this coat. I texted Scott. I'm like, I'm buying the Burberry coat in the Rome airport. He was like, that's amazing. Good for you. Luigi and I had a moment. We talked about how I had wanted this trench coat since I was 16 years old. We talked about how versatile it is. We talked about the brand. He got a great sale. I had a fantastic interaction. It was a beautiful moment for everyone involved and I loved it. I had a bunch of you reach out and say, when I first started talking about this coat, that you were very, um, I, I won't say scared, but you were apprehensive, let's say, about purchasing luxury items overseas. So I just wanna alleviate that for you a little bit. First of all, the retailers know what they're doing. I have now purchased luxury in Japan, which in Japan, it's great because you just bring your passport and they do it all right there. There's nothing for you to turn in afterwards. Um, I have done it in Mexico, which is a little bit more complicated, but they have an online app you can do. Um, and I've done it in England and I've done it on a cruise ship. I actually bought this Cartier watch on a cruise ship. So I'm not gonna go over the specifics of each of those transactions because each country works a little bit differently and each transaction was a little bit different. At the time that I purchased this watch, for example, um, that limit for what you didn't have to declare was $1,800. Anything above that, you do have to declare. Definitely check the US Customs website. Don't take my word for that because it does change all the time. Um, but what they should do is give you a form that you will then turn in when you go through customs in the US, they will say, do you have anything to declare? You will say yes. You will show them the receipt. You will show them the item, um, which is what you're supposed to do. So make sure it's not in your checked luggage. Um, and then they will decide if they're going to collect tax from you or not. And that is at their discretion. Now, I will tell you, I did not pay any tax on this watch. This was probably the one that was the most shocking because at um, Diamonds International, who runs a lot of the jewelry shops on the ship, is who I had bought this through. They had given me uh, this, this big long form to fill out. I was ready to go. I showed them all the paperwork and the guy at Port Canaveral in Florida at US Customs said, you're good. And this was me, I was like, what do you mean I'm good? Like, aren't I supposed to pay you the difference between the $1,800 and the price of this watch. And he said, no, you're fine, you can go. I have heard that experience over and over from US travelers, but obviously you always want to declare it and you wanna make sure that you can account for how that whole transaction went down um, because that that is the way you're supposed to do it. Um, now, different countries, like I know for Harrods, they have a whole floor that you can go to where they will credit that immediately back to your credit card. Mexico, it took several weeks for that tax to go back on my credit card. It just depends on the country. I will say this though, don't plan an overseas trip just to buy luxury, because even though I saved several hundred dollars on this coat, my trip was way more than several hundred dollars, right? So that's that math doesn't really work because you are gonna save some money. But I would say, number one, only do it if you already have a luxury purchase in mind and an overseas trip planned, okay? Which I had both of those things. Number two, I would say do not impulse buy luxury purchases really ever and certainly not as part of an overseas trip. You wanna make sure that you have done your homework, you've done your research, both in the case of this watch and of this coat. I had the retail price already in my head. Um, you have to be careful because if the retailer has marked up the price, even if you're saving the tax, that's not gonna do you any good. So I think impulse shopping by and large is not a good idea at all when you're shopping overseas. And then the last thing I would say is if you have one of these big investment purchases coming up for you, something you've saved for, something you're excited for, make it a big ta-da. Um, when I bought this watch, I was with my wonderful friend Charlie and everyone was so happy for me on, you know, the, the guys that, that were selling the jewelry on the cruise ship. I mean, they also got a really good sale, but they were seemed genuinely happy for me when I told them the whole story. If you're someone that is just, you know, walking through life flinging thousand dollar bills, then maybe that's no big deal for you. But for me, these purchases represent decades of hard work and gosh darn it, I'm gonna celebrate. If you're in a store and they offer you champagne to celebrate, take the champagne. Relish in that amazing purchase because if you've worked hard and you've saved the money and you get these fruits of your labor, you really do deserve 
to enjoy it. We are working towards building generational wealth for our sons. Scott and I did not come from generational wealth. We really want to leave a legacy for our kids. So I won't be doing things like this all the time because I don't want to run through their inheritance, but it is really fun and it is really, I think, honoring to my own journey to have these kind of big mile markers where I can say, I was able to purchase that through my hard work and it was a really, really fun experience. And I hope this video has given you some practicality and some tips and tricks for if you want to purchase some items on your next big overseas trip. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you're finding joy. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.